Loot in Dying Light 2 is extremely helpful and it's nice to get some very powerful items as early as possible. In this video we're gonna take a look at some of the best free sources of high-end loot very early on including for infinite items and resources that you'll definitely want to get. By the way you should totally check out this month's Dying Light 2 giveaway if you haven't already. The only requirement is to be a subscriber of the channel and follow the links below and at the end of the giveaway I'll reach out to the winner as always. Let's begin with an amazing early on farming method for infinite zombie trophies and a ton of scraps and specifically we're gonna focus on this zone surrounding elders windmill in old villa doors specifically these two forsaken stores north and south side of the windmill and these two epic convoys that guarantee at least epic quality gear right from the start and i want to start things off with the forsaken store these aren't just the best source of scraps and other crafting materials but also for this method the best zombie trophy farming in the game now you'll want to do this during the day which i know is total opposite of what the game teaches you but during the day there's way more infected inside including the virals that will drop those zombie trophies i was talking about a single run should look something like this you should jump in gather all of the zombies on the first floor maybe squeeze them in a tight spot and then use a two-hander to take multiple at a time once you're done with that you should get at least a dozen or so zombie trophies if not even more from just one run. Once you're done with that, you should go ahead and just clean the house of all the scraps and other crafting mats like chemicals, alcohol and so on and so forth. And you should get at least 200 scraps easily from just one shop run. Now the proximity to the windmill means that you can go ahead and respawn the encounter, so just waiting until the second morning will respawn all of the zombies inside and you can go ahead and farm, as I've said, infinite zombie trophies. The only problem is that for the scraps and the other materials you have to wait a few in-game hours like one or two at most for that to fully spawn or maybe even travel on the other side of the map and then come back but trust me all of these fully respawn and you can like just farm them over and over again there is also an alternative to this if you only want to focus on zombie trophies which is right here next to the bazaar also a very early on location and specifically if you also unlock the train station that has a uv lamp right outside to protect you during the night and yes you will want to farm this during the night just attack a hauler which will alert all of the enemies around you and it will start that chase but instead of running you will stay and fight now you have the option to either fight at the uv lamp which will prevent most of the enemies attacking but you can also use this truck right here with the open back onto the left side of the entrance of the bazaar it's also a really awesome method you can stay inside and just farm these enemies over and over again and there's such an abundance of virals and other high-end enemies enemies at night that you will get even more zombie trophies than in the previous method. But moving on to number 3, we've talked about those epic military convoys and luckily enough there's two epic ones very close to that center of Velador, specifically one is just east of the windmill and then there's also another one a little bit southwest of the windmill. But personally I prefer the one just east of the windmill since it's very close and once you reach that point you'll notice that there's two ambulances and also a tank. In this case I already took down these enemies, they don't seem to respawn but do keep in mind that there might be a goon spawned around these areas or some other type of high-end enemies. Once you're done with that, focus on the two ambulances, they guarantee at least an epic or above quality but you do need to like break the lock to get it in the first place. Meanwhile if you take a look at the back of the tank it doesn't require any lock picking and it also seems to have a higher chance for an artifact item to drop. Now the loot completely respawns spawns here every single time but it does again require a couple of in-game hours and a few teleports around the map but again I think I have farmed this place over 10 times already and it still spawns loot every single time. By the way if this is your first time doing it also jump over the nearby wall onto the other side you should find another military container right here and specifically inside this room that requires your GRE key to open. Inside of it you should find a GRE crate that doesn't just give you a a really cool inhibitor and some other cool items but you also get access to an artifact weapon right here from the very beginning and definitely grab it it's very useful and don't worry about breaking it you will find lots more artifact weapons with these methods anyway and as a matter of fact there's a second free artifact weapon you can find in old villa door right here into the westernmost district somewhere in the middle of it you will encounter this military sort of facility if you climb on top of it and open the hatch you can 
jump down and here you will immediately find your next artifact weapon which is totally random by the way in my case it was a long range hammer but you can also find like one handed weapons it's guaranteed to be artifact in all of these situations and on top of that you also have an epic crate and a GRE box that you can open up for even more epics and other resources by the way if you also want to play around with ranged weapons not just melee you can totally get a free epic bow right here in downtown at the top of this building by the time you reach this place you should already have the paraglider so it shouldn't be too difficult to reach the top of this building here you will find both a military drop but also right next to it you're going to notice that there's like this small little area with a skeleton nearby and then on this table you're going to be able to find this free epic bow right here which is like one of the best at that point in the game if you reach downtown now speaking of acquiring legendaries the next method isn't particularly free but with all of the loot that you get you should have more than enough old world money to afford a few from the vendors specifically there's one vendor early on at the cherry windmill a bit south over here that already sells a level 4 artifact hammer with four mod slots and it just costs 2000 old world money that's a really good deal right there definitely buy it but do keep in mind that you actually have to reach player level 4 or rank 4 to get this in the shops shops will eventually scale up with your character and the higher your rank is the better the loot you're going to find at these vendors but moving on to number five let's talk about some serious stuff including the bandit camps a large outpost with a lot of human enemies but also has a lot of loot inside it's a claimable base and most important the overwhelming majority of the bandit camps in the game guarantee at least one or more artifacts per completion now you will definitely want to go ahead and take down the enemies and the lieutenants and then raise the totem before you can go ahead and claim the base but before doing that first instead use your survivor senses to pay close attention to these locked rooms that are scattered around the bases these rooms are jam-packed with a ton of resources crafting mats accessories and high-end weapons and there is usually at least one one or two per base so you should definitely go ahead and check this out and only after you're done with all of the loot in that camp go ahead and claim the base by raising that totem otherwise you might risk losing all of this good loot that you could get and finally this brings us to another farming method that you can yes do it from the beginning of the game but it becomes super easy if you progress a lot more in the main campaign without spoiling anything eventually you will get something called a GRE detector and just like what the name implies it lets you detect Attacked, specifically in this case inhibitors on pretty much the entire map the only thing you have to do is to unlock these broadcast radio antennas that you've likely already stumbled upon but likely weren't able to complete if you didn't reach that part of the game yet well these are actually claimable and once you install these GRE detectors inside of them they will affect a huge area over which you're gonna be able to notice on the very map every single inhibitor place that you might have well skipped previously because you didn't see them and this will bring you to pretty much the GRE anomalies and other containment zones but it can also bring you to totally random areas that might have a GRE container that will give you these cool items including those inhibitors but most important a lot more resources like epics and artifacts in fact this detector is so good that you can see it on your HUD being displayed even if there's an obstacle in front of you like maybe if there's a building in front of you you can see exactly on on what floor it is so you don't have to spend that much time searching for it which I think is really convenient but again it's something that you do a lot later in the game in the meantime you can do without it but this is going to make things tremendously easier and especially if you want to like just farm a ton of HP and stamina levels this is going to be the best thing you can do once you reach that point in the story anyway this is it thank you so much for watching as always totally let me know down below in the comments how many artifact items you have so far be it weapons or just gear. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.